Please try to remain seated for the entire hour of our service. And if you would, please turn your cell phones off or to vibrate during the worship service. Our call to worship this morning, The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. Our first hymn, will you please stand, is number 73, A Worship the King. <laughs> Because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he 
the time. You might be right more than twice a day. But is there anybody here who's right all the time? Probably not, right? Now, when you look at our congregation, we come from a lot of different walks of life. We come from a bunch of different cultures and, and backgrounds and, and places. And especially I'm wrong when I make an assumption about you. My watch is off. Right. Yeah, your watch is way off. Um, <laughs> um, if I make an assumption about you, I may not be right. If you come from a different cultural heritage than I come from, and I make an assumption about you, I may be way wrong. If you, if you, uh, if you're, if you come from in, in poverty or you come from wealth, and I make an assumption about you, I might be way wrong. But the one thing that I know, where I'm always right, is that you are my brothers and sisters in Christ. Right. You are the body of Christ, and the one thing that I can assume, and I can always be right, is that you were loved by God. And because you are loved by God, I am always right when I love you. Even though I don't understand you, <coughs> even though sometimes I can't speak your language, even though I don't understand where you're coming from sometimes, and that's just if you're married to the person. Imagine if you don't even know um, how, how, how it can be. Um, she's asleep in the back here. Okay? <laughs> um, so, she's smiling now. Okay. Um, so, I, I think that's important for us to remember that like this watch, sometimes when we make assumptions about others in the body of Christ, we may be more wrong, right, or more wrong than right. right. And we can take instruction from each other and we can learn from each other. But there are some things that are absolutely the truth. And that is that God loves us and we must love each other. And together we will be the body of Christ. Amen? Okay. Richard, I know this is yours. I'm going to put it in the bag. Now I'll show you the magic trick where I hit it with a hammer. And, uh, this is part of your Civil War thing, isn't it? Okay. Um, okay, we're going to sing the hymns next that we've assigned for the day. And I expect to hear better singing on this hymn than I did the first hymn now. What a friend we have in Jesus. Find us 
to treat that cancer um, real soon, and we just know it's going to be effective. You got it early, and I was going to say the joy was I can see the doctor's Tuesday. It's going to be successful, whatever it is. They're going to get it. So, yes. We just need prayers for our family. Um, we're all going through a little bit of different things, but we're all going through it together. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yes. I need you. Oh, oh. I have a friend in KU, and I need prayers for her and her family. They're going to have to make some pretty hard decisions for the next few days. Okay. She's a Christian woman, so she feels good. Her name is Bobby Jo Turner. <clears throat> Bobby Cho. Okay. Um, yeah. Contrary to what my kids say, Janice, I don't have eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one. Big. Uh, her for my mom, Christine. Um, she's been in, been in and out of the hospital, but she's back on the streets and okay. staying in the park and stuff like that. I just pray that she can find a place again to live. All right, be safe. Got that. Um, My uncle Buzzy's uh, sister-in-law, her her daughter committed suicide last week too. So, uh, Jamie. What's her name? Jamie Jones. Jamie. Uh huh. And uh, and Donna. Betty. Is, is Donna the one that committed suicide? No, her daughter did. Her daughter did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go to Joy. So, do you have a question? Well, uh, my our son that's going to be an answer to the fingers. The scabs are looking good. They said it could have been here. Too much okay. shoulder bomb. But the thing is, he's going to hurt me right now because I know it. Something else drops up. Joyce? Yes, Wilma. Shotgun's wife had her hip worked on. Yes. Uh, it's been a week and she's up walking and doing real well. And so we want to be really grateful because it makes his life a lot better. You know her name? You know what? I don't. I always just say, tell Mama hi. We have a volunteer downstairs named Shotgun. And, um, his, his name is actually Ralph. Yeah, his name is Ralph, yeah. Um, and his wife, yes, um, his wife right just now. had hip surgery. So. Another joy, Kayla has Kayla really has not been any episode. She's had a pretty good story. We're glad for that. Thank you. Others? Yes. Everybody was thrilled with smoke checking yesterday, yes. so be this, grateful for it. This shotgun, he's a genius. This, this guy shotgun, whose wife had hip surgery, smokes meat for us to use in the hot meal program yesterday. Yeah. We had like 240 pieces of smoked chicken that we were able to serve in the hot meal program to the community. It was gone. Today we have smoked sausage and pinto beans um, that for the hot meal program. And so um, we want to thank God for the ministry of the hot meal program. Um, and Richard did the cooking both days this week and put both, all that together. So we want to give Richard thanks when you see it. He's got to go down the patrolling or down the kitchen doing something. So, all right. Other things? All right, let's pray together a prayer to behold Jesus, and then we'll pray something. Let us pray. O God, who blessed Son manifested himself to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open, we pray, the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
God of grace, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for all of the blessings. Sometimes, God, we, we consider our problems and we let a, they get us down and we forget that you're here with us uh, and it seems like we have a self poor, poor, pitiful me prayer. And yet, God, we know many blessings, many, many blessings. We look around us and see that when we think our plight is bad, someone says so much worse. And so for every blessing we give you, great thanks. We thank you for a hip surgery that went well, for a senior citizen woman who's healing remarkably quickly from that. We thank you for Mindy's life and that she hasn't had any more symptoms from the trouble she was having physically. We thank you for um, the ministries in this church and for all of the people who are involved in them, especially we, we give you thanks for the ministry of Richard here as he prepared the food to be ready to go, and for our kitchen crew who, who stay and pack those, those bags and fill those to-go boxes and, and serve those plates of food, and for the wonderful job that they do. We pray for one who's traveling to Topeka today without the resources to get there and yet finding the resources along the way. We pray for the grief of, of this woman and her family as they must deal with the suicide of a loved one. And we pray for traveling mercies for her. We pray for another family that's also grieving because of the suicide that took place in their family. God, help us to be sensitive to those who are experiencing mental illness, and especially depression. God, we ask that you would change our views on what mental illness is and what it does to people, so that um, we might be more caring and more willing to reach out in, in the love that you give us for all people, to bring about healing, to have resources where healing might be found. We remember the Salid family this day and for the struggles that each of them are having. And God, we just pray that you'd unite them in this time of issues and keep them strong as a family. We pray for Kimberly, who's going to have tests on Tuesday and maybe find out exactly how the treatment will go for her cancer. And God, we're claiming victory for her this day, that the treatment plan that is devised for her would kill every cancer cell in her body. We pray for a friend in KU who's ill, and for family members who are going to have to be making some very difficult health decisions in the next few days. Give them strength, undergird them with your peace and your embrace. We lift them up to you this morning. Be with Christine, who's homeless again. She's been in and out of the hospital, and God, she's lost her place to live now. And so we just pray that you would keep her safe while she's on the streets, and that a new home would open up for her soon, so she could be out of the way. We pray for, <clears throat> for those who are afflicted with multiple sclerosis, for those who have one of the three worst forms of it, that you would give strength where there's weakness, steadiness where there's shakiness, hope where there's sometime despair. And God, we pray that you'd be with those who research multiple sclerosis. We thank you for all the new medicines that are there to treat it. 
We pray especially for a medicine that will treat secondary progressive events right now. And we pray for a cure in the end. All of these things we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. things. 
They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God, and all the people, and how our chief priest and the leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while we were talking, while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. <clears throat> I get to tell you this morning about an experience that happens to me on every day but Tuesday, normally. And I get to walk into French room because um, he only lives five minutes from me now. And if Fred is awake when I come into his room, his eyes lighten, and there's this recognition on his face. This is Gary who's come. He's coming to the room. And even if I have to wake him up, once his eyes focus in on who it is standing before him, shaking him, um, then his face gets a different countenance on it than then um, uh, when I've seen him so weak in the past and, and just doing our once a week visits um, to Topeka, he likes up, he becomes a different person. I remember my dad had that same look on his face when my brother and I used to go out to Lake Uvira. When he saw us walking in the yard and he was out on the deck, he'd light up and he got more animated because presence makes a difference, doesn't it? Yes. Being with people makes a difference. That personal touch makes all of the difference. As much as um, I like hearing from, uh, from friends, I'd much rather see them. As much as I like doing FaceTime with my grandchildren, I'd far rather them be in my living room or my, uh, me and in their living room. Presence makes a difference. The good news this morning that comes from the scripture is that yes, presence does make a difference and Jesus is here. And we sometimes have a hard time grasping that presence. Amen? Sometimes it's hard for us to say Jesus is here, but Jesus is here. No matter how hard it is for us, Jesus is still here. Jesus doesn't say, well, if you're going to be difficult about it, I'll just leave. Even when we have trouble seeing Jesus, 
Even when we have trouble recognizing Jesus, even when we have trouble hearing Jesus yet, Jesus is present. Jesus is here, and that's the good news of Easter. Amen? You realize in this scripture that it's still Easter in this scripture. Jesus hasn't even been risen from the dead for 24 hours, and already he's showing himself. He's showing himself to the apostles, and, uh, to Simon, and, and he showed himself to the women who were at the tomb, and now he's walking down the road to Emmaus with these two people that are walking along and talking about the events of the day. And if you don't think presence doesn't make a difference, look at what happened to these two people, how they were transformed when they understood that Jesus was present. They're walking down the road, and Jesus decides he's going to take a stroll with them. So Jesus is walking down the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus with these two fellows. And um, of course, you know, he knows what they're talking about, right? Never think that you have a conversation that Jesus doesn't hear. Oh, no. Right? Maybe, maybe those are, are not a good memory for you, but <coughs> Jesus hears everything we say. Jesus is with us and is present and knows what we say. And so he knows what these two have said. And you can hear in their conversation that they've lost hope. They've lost, we had hoped that Jesus was the one who would redeem Israel. We had hoped, they said. They had hope and they lost hope because of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his laying in the tomb. Um, they had hoped. They had, they had heard about the women coming back and saying that, that he was alive. But you know, they're like Thomas and we're like Thomas. I didn't see him. The women say they did, but in the Jesus time, the attitude was they were just women giving their testimony. They were probably just hysterical. Understand it. Women were the first proclaimers of the gospel. They were the first bringers of the good news. They were the first bringers of the new hope to the apostles who were where? Hid <coughs> out in a building someplace for fear of the Jews. Here they come and they bring hope. These people on this road had lost their hope. We had hope. You ever lose hope? You ever lose it? Right? There's a ton of things in this world that if you, if you dwell on them, they can make you lose your hope. We, can, we had hoped that the economy would get better, but we had hope that inflation would fall a little sooner. We had hoped that my daughters, one of them, would become, or my son would become a preacher. We had hoped for that. And then my daughter marries a Baptist minister. <laughs> we had hoped. But you know what? I look at my kids and I'm encouraged. I look at the faith of Michelle. I look at I look at the faith of Mary, um, Mary who serves, and she is a minister, she serves on the worship team of her church, and we have hope. We hear of, of um, the good things that are going on in their lives, and it's because we commit them to prayer, and they're committed to prayer, and we know that good things are going to happen, so we have hope. We have hope because Jesus is present in our lives saying, pray for them. And Jesus is in their lives saying, pray for yourselves and, and revealing God's self and, and showing that blessings always happen. Blessings, there's always something in this day to be thankful for. Amen? Amen. Always at least a blessing if you can find it. And you should go over your day at the end of every day and recount the many ways that you could have hoped. Because God has acted in your life in some way. Recount those. The song says, count your blessings. Name them one by one. They had lost their joy. They had, imagine the joy of walking and talking with Jesus, right? In the flesh, for the crucifixion, 
Imagine the joy of sitting around with Jesus while he tells you a story and serves you unlimited fish and bread while you're sitting in the wilderness. Imagine the joy those people must have known. And now Jesus has been taken from them and even though the women came and said, there's reason for hope, he's alive. Still they had lost their joy. I have known sadness in my life. You have known sadness in your life. Amen. Amen. I've lost both my parents. I have known sadness. So have you. There are those that, that we love that sometimes are ill or those we love who are struggling and we are filled with sadness and yet even in the midst of sadness the Bible tells us that there is a joy unspeakable. And it, 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 can't be, it can't be understood that even when our lives are taxed, even when our lives are pressed, even when it seems like the world is closing around us, when we hear Jesus proclaim, I am here, we know there's reason for joy. It's like the Jewish prisoner in the German concentration camp that said, even though he didn't see the sun shining, Yet he had faith the sun shone that day. Amen. Even though we can't see a reason for joy, we know that Jesus is present and there is a reason for rejoicing. And we also know, as I told you last week, that, that weeping tarries for the night, but joy comes with the morning. They lost their joy, and here is Jesus walking down the road with them. They have lost their hope, and yet here is Jesus walking down the road with them. Jesus is in the walk, so I guess it matters how we walk. Amen? It matters how we walk, and I'm not saying if you talk the talk, you're going to walk the walk. That's, that cliche is for now. Jesus is in your walk, no matter where your walk takes you this day. Whether that walk takes you down a difficult path or an easy path, whether that walk takes you through the valley of the shadow, or whether that walk takes you to a mountaintop, whether that walk takes you to wonderful heavenly DeSoto, or leaves you in Wyandotte County, <laughs> Jesus goes the walk with you, amen? Jesus goes the walk with you. Jesus goes the way. There is no turn that you will make today that Jesus won't make that same turn with you. There is no mountain you will climb that Jesus won't climb it with you and probably help you up it. There is no circumstance in which you walk this day that Jesus will not be walking with you. Jesus says, I am here. I am walking with you. And all we need to do is recognize it. And if we would recognize that Jesus goes the way with us, there would certainly be cause for hope, and there would certainly be cause for joy. But Jesus does more than just walk with these fellows from his hands. Walking's great, unless you have MS, then you do it so that you don't end up in one of these. And if you end up like that, then Jesus is still with you, right? Then Jesus is with you in the room. <laughs> All right. Jesus was in the talk as well. They didn't know it. They're talking and they're sad. <coughs> they lost their hope. And they're even discussing Jesus. Do you understand that? How can you talk about Jesus and not have any joy? <laughs> To even say the name of Jesus makes me smile, unless I'm blaspheming after I've hit my thumb with a hammer. <laughs> Normally, when I say the name of Jesus, it makes me smile, it fills me with joy, it fills me with hope, it gives me a reason to smile. Yet they're talking about Jesus, and they're, they're, they're sad. They're filled with this, this overwhelming sadness. And I tried to think of, a, of a, an example of what that would be like in modern day. And I remember the district superintendent telling me at a supervisory conference that I had with them one time about a church that was distributing groceries 
to people as they drove up to their church. What a joyful thing, amen? To help people to eat that don't have food. To be able to get what Jesus said, right? I was hungry and you gave me food. So there's reason for joy and hope in that. And here this church was, they were handing out groceries and they were inviting people to their church through the open car windows, but their invitation also included a litany of things that they didn't have anymore at their church. We invite you to church, but our Sunday school's pretty weak. Our pastor's not that great a preacher. Our coffee fellowship, we can only afford half the dose of coffee. I mean, you can hear them, the litany of things that, who wants to go to a church like that? There's no joy. Here's your food. Come join us as we celebrate the resurrection every Sunday at 10.30. Oh my, strap me up and get me there. Amen? There's joy in Jesus. There's hope in Jesus. And it's in our talk. I've never heard anyone who knew that Jesus was walking with them ever talk like Eeyore when they mentioned Jesus' name. Have you? There's a joy to being a Christian. There's a joy to saying the name of Jesus. There's a strength to calling on Jesus' name. Jesus is in our walk. Jesus is in our talk. And that makes me happy. How long till church is out? <laughs> Richard's beans and sausage are waiting for all of us. <laughs> God bless us. Everyone. <laughs> Here's why it's important to know that Jesus is in the walk and that Jesus is in the talk. Because you need to walk and talk like Jesus. Else how are other people going to know about Jesus? Man, when you walk around with that Jesus drunk, and you should be strutting because you're a Christian, you are a king's kid, you hear me? You are a child of the sovereign. You are created by God, you are unique, and Jesus is walking through you with this world. I guarantee you, if you walk in the name of the Savior, people are going to see the Savior in your walk. Yes? Does that make sense? Oh boy, another day with Jesus. <laughs> walk with the Savior, and the Savior walks with you, and people can see it because Jesus walks you into some of the fine situations in life. The situations where you have to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and visit the sick and those in prison. Those who really need to hear about Jesus, who need to see Jesus walking in their lives, that need to hear Jesus say, I am here, will hear it when Jesus takes your feet and walks you straight to those people. When Jesus walks you to the person who may be hurting because their marriage is breaking up. And they don't need your judgment. They need you to walk there with the healing of Jesus. To walk there and let them know that Jesus has just arrived. And is ready to minister to the broken heart. To those who are suffering from medical diagnoses that they can't quite handle yet. To be able to walk up to them and in the name of Jesus Christ to... to to hold their hand, to embrace them, to pray for them and give them hope and joy and let them know that Jesus is there and that while it may be that the doctors seem to be abandoning them in their diagnosis, Jesus has not. And Jesus is called the great physician. Amen? You'd be surprised how much easier healing goes when people know that not only is Dr. Jordan on the case, but Dr. Jesus is on the case too. But Jesus walks us to people in those circumstances. Jesus must be in our walk. And Jesus must be in our talk. You can't be afraid to say the name of Jesus in public. 
People think, oh, Jesus is pretty. I might get judged. Amen? Someone's going to judge me if I say the name of Jesus. Blessed are you when you are persecuted and when people say all manner of evil against you for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for such were the prophets persecuted before you. Again, when you talk to talk, Jesus sends what? Rejoicing. Joy. People know about Jesus because we walk and we talk Jesus. When our words issue Jesus comfort, when our words lift up a prayer in Jesus' name for someone, when we do all these things, when we walk like Jesus, when we talk like Jesus, when we break bread like Jesus broke bread, when we're willing to share the blessings that we have, to break bread like Jesus broke bread, then people will say what those men said after Jesus popped out, so to speak. Didn't our hearts burn within us? Didn't our hearts burn within us? Wasn't our joy restored? Wasn't our hope restored? I tell you, we're on the way to Emmaus this day. Wherever Emmaus may be for you, and Jesus is on the road with you. Jesus is speaking to you. Listen and walk on. Strain your ear to hear the voice of God speaking to you and walk on. Walk on in strength. Walk on in joy. Walk on in hope. And as you walk on, remember that Jesus is taking you in the midst of some people that are in some pretty tight spots in this life who need your joy, who need your hope, who need to know the message that you have to give them. And what is the message? Jesus is here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a key. Yeah.
right here, and then Saturday and Sunday for the meal. We could use a few more hands downstairs after worship to help serve the meal today if you're available. Please report downstairs. And then our 2023 congregational challenge. Okay. Attend worship every Sunday, participate in at least one outreach ministry, disciple one person through to make a decision for Christ and full membership. And then 27,000 is the target. That's what we need in the collection plan. I share that figure with my clergy friends. They are all amazed at how low our budget is in this church. So, know that that 27,000 is a blessing. Claim it as a blessing and as a joy. And drop your money in the offering. Amen. Okay. All right, our number party is about birthdays. Birthdays and anniversaries. Someday I'm going to remember. We missed Nick's birthday. He was not here. Nick, Nick, everybody turn around and look right at Nick. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God of grace and joy and peace go with you from this place. By the presence of God's Holy Spirit, may you be made well aware that Jesus is here and everywhere. In the name of that same Christ, go forward and make it a terrific week. Amen. 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 So you said you're early, are you recognizing that? Well, when you sent me the message on Facebook, oh, I hit the view profile so I could see your picture and recognize it. I'm glad you're seen today. Thank you. Good to see you.